Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video on the F1 23 game. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to master no racing line on this game. These tips and tricks will also be applicable and applicable to other racing games. I racing the set of course that are factor in every racing game you can imagine. These techniques that I'm going to be teaching you today will help you improve your lap time and consistency on every game and every racing car that can be available for you to drive. With that being said, I'm going to be breaking down this video into four segments. Your track positioning, your breaking points, your apex points, and also your throttle on zones on the exit of the corner. Covering the four basics on how to master the racing line within racing, but especially F123. So kicking things off with track positioning. It's always going to be critical to open up the apex as much as possible. Simply put, the bigger radius arc you have around the corner, the more potential minimum speed you can carry through the apex. If you have too much of a tight line going into corner, like this example here, you can see the apex is at such a tighter angle and it's going to be impossible. In possible to carry as much speed through the apex compared to having a wider angle into the apex hence why you see cars battling side by side the car on the outside line generally can carry more speed and get the move completed along the outside providing the driver is not pushed off the track of course this is as i just described the wider you are going into the apex, the more minimum speed you can carry. The tighter you are going into the apex, the less minimum speed you can carry. Although in road cars, this will have less of an effect. In a Formula 1 car and a downforce car especially, but speaking about Formula 1 cars in this situation, you have a lot of downforce and ground effect from these modern Formula 1 cars. So carrying minimum speed in the apexes is more critical than debatably ever. The more downforce is created by more minimum speed and that's a very key to remember. So going back to the opening up the radius arc of the corner, you want to be positioning your car as far to the outside as possible, providing there is grip. On Imola, there is enough grip on these outside curbings that you can break on these curbstones, but on other tracks, maybe there's grass, there's gravel lining the white line. At this point, you want to be using up as much as track as possible, right up to the white line. Generally, wherever you can position your car, that will give you significant grip to go faster and have better speed potential. Do it and open up the apex as much as possible. You can see another benefit of opening up the apex as much as possible is I have a clear view of the track ahead of me. If I was approaching the track from a tighter angle, I wouldn't even be able to see up the hill at this point. And this will give me a very distinct advantage over a qualifying lap, but especially a racing lap that I can pick my track limits and avoid picking up corner cut warnings as much as possible. This will also play effect on corners like chicanes. Chicanes are slightly more complex of a situation when positioning your car as traditional turns, I should say, uh, where it's just like turning left or turning right in one apex motion. It is very simple that you just position your car at the outside of the track, get on the throttle as early as possible and away you go. With a chicane, you have to meet a compromise, but the standard is always true that you want to be opening up the corner as much as possible. You can see coming into the chicane at Imola, it is okay to be running the curbstone on the outside, and that will provide you significant grip to allow you to break on it in a faster fashion than not using it. As I highlighted before, traditionally you want to be using as much of the track on the apex as possible, but when you're approaching corner complexes that have multiple corner apexes in one sequence, such as the chicane, maggots and beckets at Silverstone, and anywhere that there's a chicane or flowing section of corners that lead on to a major back straight, this is the technique that you want to be applying. You want to be compromising this first apex and the racing line of the first apex Exit the corner in the middle of the track in this scenario and open up the exit as much as possible. And this will give you good track positioning to go forward. 
When you're learning and getting the basics of no racing line, I highly advise you to be focusing all of your energy on the exit as much as possible. And as you get more confident, more precise, and more importantly, more dynamic and fluid within your motions of the steering wheel, your throttle and brake, you can start to pull that apex a little bit earlier and earlier and earlier and start carrying more minimum speed through the apexes and build up that confidence. A good technique is to spend 10 laps doing one driving line, one technique, look where you can improve, and then spend the next 10 laps trying to push that apex a bit further and a bit closer and a bit closer and keep an eye on that delta and then you can start to understand what racing lines are fast for you. Generally, all racing lines are about the same in a Formula 1 car, but there are micro differences in driving style that will allow you to carry more or less speed for an apex in the entry or exit phases. For example, my driving style, I have a relatively early to the apex driving style, what naturally compromises my exit on a very slight minor basis as well, but the extra speed I carry into the apex more than makes up for it in my driving style situation, and that is comparing to other drivers as well who are maybe later to the apex but have slightly better exits. It's all about you in racing and how you can maximize your potential and don't bother trying to copy other people so much because they have a different driving style to you and only you know how to maximize your driving style. With that being said though, we're going to be moving on to the braking phase of this tutorial. Without the racing line, it's going to be very difficult to pick up brake marker points and be precise. But this is where all racing tracks around the world have these marker boards on the outside of the track which state the 100 meter board, 50 meter board and 150 meter board as well. They're normally positioned to the outside of the track and the inside of the track as well. On some corners, these are not always applicable because maybe the braking marker can be 70 or 80 meters. And this is where these marker boards over to the right hand side, I'm going to do a bit of a lawn mowing here. You can see right here where you have the safety car boards, the barriers and as well the Pirelli marketing boards can give you good opportunities to use these as braking markers as well. Another opportunity is the lines in the track. The skid marks, the shadows, the trees. When you don't have that racing line, what stamps on the screen a big red, like brake here or be on the throttle here, it's critical that you pick up these natural marker boards on how you can start turning into the corners, braking, and picking up the nuanced details will allow you to go faster. I'm going to head down to turn one and the first sector here in Imola and show you some examples of how you can do this. You can see I'm flying down to turn one and you can see I spot the 150 meter board, the 100 meter board and the 50 meter board both on the inside and the outside of the track. For Imola, it is okay to be using the 100 meter board for turn one. So that's easy, simplistic and easily done. 100 meter board, bang, on the brakes, slow the car down. Turning point, exit curb, when it ends, that's when to turn in. And then you can start using these little things and these markers for your brain and go, okay, 100 meter board brake. When the curve ends, turn in and you start getting into this really fluid motion and how you can start using these details around the track to assist you in your lap time potential. Again, 150 meter board, 100 meter board. And what we're going to be doing for this apex is bring the car over to the right hand side, hitting the brake and turning in at the 50 meter board. And that will allow us to guide to the apex. Some corners do not have a turning marker. This is one of the corners with the best examples that you do not have a reference to turn into or one that is not easy to spot anyway. I certainly don't use a reference marker on this corner. That makes you rely on your instinct. Your previous data and your brain will be logging information from the previous laps on when you turned in and it's a very obvious statement i know i'm going to be saying here but i have to cover it if you turn in at one point on lap two for example and you miss your apex turn in earlier if you turn in at one point on lap two and you're climbing all over these inside curbings and bouncing off them turn in later <laughs> Just move it by two or three meters or even less than that in some situations and that will allow you to adjust your racing line. Remember, 
the car is changing every lap. Tires are losing grip, the fuel is being burned off, maybe it's raining even, and you have to be adjusting to this lap by lap, corner by corner, to maximize the grip levels of the car. Another example here is you'll be braking at the 50 meter board and there's no distinct turning in marker here. So what you can start doing is picking up the gravel on the right hand side of the track. Okay, the gravel is out of the screen right now. Okay, now it's time to turn in, bring the car all the way through the apex. And as I say, just generally try to pick up these little reference markers that maybe are not always the brake marker boards, but maybe the Sid car boards on the right hand side, the advertising board, the shadow, perfect example on this corner. The 50 meter board is at exactly the same place as the shadow here. So instead of using the 50 meter board, when my car comes out of the shadow, I hit the brake. And that can allow you this consistency and applicability to be learning and picking up these different mark points around a lap. Now we're gonna be talking about the apex of the corner. And the apex of the corner is going to be very complex on every single situation, but especially when you have corners that feed into another corner. Acro Minerali is the perfect example. What you want to be doing when you get to the middle of your apex is, if it's a single apex, bring the car to the inside. But if it's a double apex like this, it's all going to be about track positioning, setting up the second part of the apex as much as possible. And as you get to the apex, the really key things about the car characteristic, your characteristics as well as a driver, is you want your car to not be sliding at any point in the middle apex phase, as this will heavily compromise your confidence and ability to get back on the power. So in some situations you can use the inside curb stones, in some situations you can't. As I've alluded to earlier in this video, you have to be adaptable and pliable to every single unique corner situation, and dynamic to maximize your performance. Acrominerali part two of the Apex, for example, you won't use the curbstone and that will unsettle your car if you do. Whereas the chicane, you'll be jumping over this curb on the inside. So middle Apex phase is all about learning the corner, but the key fundamental part of this is all about about making sure your car is stable at that apex. Whatever you do in the braking zone, whatever you do, just make sure when you get your car to the apex, it is calm, settled, composed, and this will allow you to get back on the power in the most fashionable, fast, stylish way possible. And what I mean by that is you don't want your car to be like drifting all over the place like this. You don't want your car like sliding. It looks cool for the camera, but it's just slow and it's just, it's just not quick enough. So you really want to bring your car in super fluid, tiptoeing into the apex and how you can get the car back out of the corner as fast as possible. With that being said, we're going to be talking about the throttle on zones now. And after we talk about the throttle on zones, I'm going to be talking about the complex corners like chicanes, turn one, high speed flowing natures, magnets and beckets a bit more to give you more insightful detail on that as well. Corner exits are all about using up as much track as possible. You can see turn two here at Imola, you'll be using up as much track, flowing the car to the outside of the track, carrying a constant radius arc. Generally, the more that you are turning your steering wheel, the less grip you have. It's a very basic rule, I know, but it's even a rule that I apply in my racing today. So we're going through the entry phase of the corner, bring the car in, middle phase of the corner, car should be settled, planted and stable, middle phase of the corner again, and running the car all the way out, constant radius arc right up to the white line, bring the car over to the right hand side, braking phase, turn in phase, Hit the apex, the car is settled, smooth on the power, constant radius arc out to the outside and keeping the wheel as smooth as possible. One more time, braking phase, entry phase, middle corner phase and radius arc towards the outside of the corner as much as possible. And like I say, the straighter your steering wheel is, the more general grip you will have 
pliable to you. For example, here on the exit, you can keep your wheel straight as you're rising up over the hill and you can have phenomenal grip. Whereas if you're coming to the exit phase of the corner and you're panicking, your car is sliding because you didn't settle the car enough in the middle phase of the corner, like I've said about a million times in this video already, keep your car settled in the middle of the apex. If your car is not settled in the middle of the apex like this, you'll be sliding all the way on the exit and your lap time will be ruined, let alone your tyres will be screaming being overheated. So to summarise it, braking you want to be using your marker points, track positioning all the way to the outside of the apex, opening up the constant radius arc as much as possible in the middle of the corner. Keep your car settled, meet your clipping point. If you want to use the curb, use the curb. Just make sure the car is settled, calm and composed on the exit. Carry a constant radius arc all the way out to the white line and use the curb stones if it does have the grip to be advantageous on the exit smooth on the power and build up if you're getting wheel spin obvious statement i know reduce the throttle a little bit as building up your confidence and being smooth on the throttle will reward you in the long term much better than slamming the throttle and being all over the track like this as that will definitely well slow you down in many senses obvious statement i know but now we're going to be talking about the complex corners that I alluded to earlier in this video. When we're looking at the first sequence here at Imola, you can see that it's one, two, three apexes all flowing into each other, what are so critical on lap time. So when you have these type of apexes and corner complexes, it's so critical that you actually learn to compromise one corner for the next. Because if I came through term one, and then maximize the speed through turn one, maybe I would get this point about a tenth up on my lap time, compared to my PB even. But I would lose three tenths by having this apex too tight. And that would cost me over a stint, a lap time, seconds maybe, even over a race stint, but definitely would cost you the chance of pole position in a qualifying scenario. Whereas, if you came out of turn one, as we do a nice little reversing job here, if you came out of turn one and you position your car to the middle of the track and opened up turn two as much as possible, carried a lot of minimum speed, opened up the, right, the arc radius of the corner, and that will allow you a much better compromise overall. Another corner very similar here is at the end of the first sector here in Imola. I could go flat out. This first apex could literally be flat out in a Formula 1 car in qualifying. But you would approach the next apex all the way at the inside and you would lose half a second on this one apex alone by being too tight. So you can take this first apex flat out, but the faster compromise is to actually lift, lose a temp on this first apex, bring the car to the middle of the road and then open up this next corner. Comparing the two driving styles of going flat through the apex and not compromising for the second apex, compromising the first apex and setting up the second apex would easily be at least eight temps faster over one sequence of corners and you can imagine doing this correctly setting it up appropriately and doing it in the proper fashion that racing cars and tracks are designed to do how much speed and time you can gain over a lap of racing stint as well so think about it think about your racing line think about your track positioning think about your braking points your clipping points and your throttle on points and make sure that you never stop learning even today, even driving just time trial or iRacing for my friends or whatever, doing F4, Formula Ford, I'm learning, I'm thinking, I'm developing. You never stop learning as a human being. So don't be afraid to turn off the racing line. It's going to take some time. It's going to take a lot of time to learn. It took me months back in 2014 to learn to do it without racing line. So everyone's human. It took me months to learn it. It's going to take you maybe some time as well. So don't be put off. Don't be shy. 
and always look forward to the gains that can, can be happening in the long term performance as well. With that being said, I've been Brendan Lee. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Glad to be with that theme. Bye bye.